the entrance antiphon for the votive mass of the, of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating the um, Immaculate Heart of, Mar of the Blessed Virgin Mary as it's her first Saturday, but also we recognize that it is the memorial of St. Teresa of Calcutta, founder of the Missionaries of Charity. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, learn from myself and Apollos not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will be inflated with pride in favor of one person over against another. Who confers distinction upon you? What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? You are already satisfied you have already grown rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we might also become kings with you. For as I see it, God has exhibited us apostles as the last of all, like people sentenced to death. Since we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and men alike, we are fools on Christ's account but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clad and roughly treated. We wander about homeless and we toil, working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we respond gently. We have become like the world's rubbish, the scum of all to this very moment. I'm writing you this not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to the ball. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord keeps all who love him but all the wicked he will destroy. Lord, if you can all fall upon him. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Cleanse my heart and my lips, and to govern more than proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, 
His disciples were picking up, picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry? How he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering, which only the priests could lawfully eat, ate of it, and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, um, just out of respect for Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa, uh, I did choose the votive mass for the Blessed Virgin because whenever we would, um, we learned in seminary from her community uh, that after every meal we would sing this song, and it, it, I won't sing it, but it was almost pure and loving heart of my mother and my queen, grant that I may love thee, love thee more and more. And it went on, and but the missionaries of charity had a great love. Mother Teresa had a great love for the Blessed Virgin, um, and so joining Saint Teresa of Calcutta today, we honor Our Lady um, and ask that by the Holy Spirit our hearts may become like hers, her heart, which is all for Jesus. And that brings us to the point of the gospel. Uh, it's really interesting. Jesus says, the Son of Man, him, Jesus, is Lord of the Sabbath. That's a fascinating statement because who created the Sabbath? God. God created the Sabbath. So how can this human, Jesus, be Lord of something that God created? That's what's fascinating is that Jesus is saying he has the authority of God. Why does he have the authority of God? Because he is God. So that's the first thing that's fascinating, is that by Jesus saying he has authority over the Sabbath, he's making a claim of his divinity. But the second point is, what is the Sabbath? When God created the seventh day, it was a day of rest where we would rest with God, where we get to be with God. And so when Jesus says he's the Lord of the Sabbath, in a way he's the perfection of the Sabbath because here you have in this one person humanity and divinity, God, coming together and being together in this one guy. <laughs> and so as we look for how do I rest with God on the Sabbath, we look to Jesus because he's the Sabbath walking around, humanity and divinity being together perfectly. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So, where's Mary come in? Mary comes in because as a mere human, the gem of our race, of our humanity, she exemplifies what it means to rest with God. I mean, we can say, Jesus, yeah, he's great, but he's God. But Mary... I can relate to her a little bit more because she's not God. And she shows us how to rest in our hearts with the Lord in faith. Mother Teresa would, as you all probably know, they had a lot of work to do, but they would make sure they prayed every day. They would rest with the Lord in adoration. At least one hour, usually two hours a day and go to Mass every day. Their apostolic work was fed by their contemplative, quiet prayer. Prayer came first. If they could not see Jesus in the Eucharist, she said, how could we see Jesus in the dist distressing disguise of the poor? 
And so for us, for our apostolic work, is to let it come from our communion with God. In a special way, I'd like to honor our Indian sisters who are here, and for your witness, your apostolic work, and our continued prayers for you and your community as you continue to serve Christ in the disguise of those you care for, our brothers and sisters, through the intercession of St. Teresa of Calcutta and the Immaculate Heart of our Blessed Virgin Mary. May your work continue well and your own holiness. Thank you for your service. For the church, the servant of Christ, and steward of God's mysteries, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for all who exercise political or judicial power in our nation, and for those seeking to bridge political divides, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all gathered here who seek a deeper relationship with Christ and his church, may the grace of the Holy Spirit transform them for his purpose let us pray to the Lord. For a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that God will heal the sick and strengthen those who care for them and help us all to persevere in faith, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died marked with the sign of death, may the angels and saints lead them to the new heavenly Jerusalem and for the intentions of this mass, James Lichter, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. And together we offer our parish vocations prayer. That our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and wonders in the womb, will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual bread. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful, presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy, pa Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and especially as we celebrate the mem memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thanks with endless praise. For truly, even to earth's end, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adored your majesty and rejoiced in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, Holy Lord, Lord, Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, per that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ the kingdom of the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Of God. Amen. 
mutate organisms or create a piece. Receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection, mind and body, and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Mary treasured all these words, reflecting on them in her heart. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, we who commemorate the mother of your Son, may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.